Hello, I'm Jason Klom, and I'm here at the Dana Jay's Comedy Hour archives with a special treat. As you may know, the history of Dana Jay's Comedy Hour predates the recorded word, but what you might not know is that our archive also houses comedy recorded on some of the rarest media in the history of recorded media. Now, for instance, perhaps you've heard of the Edison Cylinder. It is a historically important piece of media, uh, but Edison was not the only manufacturer of cylinder phonographs or the blank cylinders uh, that they recorded onto. Now, one of the shorter-lived brands was uh, the Gornished Roll, which I have here. The Gornished Roll, uh, the typical cylinder is made of hard wax, um, but the Gornished Roll was an early experiment in the use of plastics in recorded media. Highly unusual. Now, one concern when you open a tube like this, I'm using a Dan and Jay's Comedy Hour sketch from 1893 entitled World's Columbian Sex Position, which is yet to be digitized, um, uh, is the condition of the original. That's one of the things we have to think about. Now, while early tubes uh, like this were highly resilient and uh, preferential to uh, the ones made of wax, which yielded poor fidelity, especially after being played enough times. Even these tubes often don't age well in terms of physicality and, of course, comedic content. Um, even with this tube, which has never uh, been uh, opened uh, or played because it was likely never even purchased, uh, we have to take extra care in handling it. That's what's important. That's why the, the white gloves, of course. Now, the typical way to make sure you do not scratch the outside is to uh, put two fingers in thus and... Ah, and unfortunately here we are with the most typical problem with how these cylinders are made with this process age. Uh, the sound has separated from the oil-based plastic. Fortunately, that is why any archivist worth their salt has at their disposal a good a-centrifuge. Not unlike a centrifuge, an a-centrifuge is off-center. Uh, so as to not only reconstitute the ingredients, but make sure that they reposition appropriately. Now here, I just hit this button and machine goes. And approximately one hour later, we have this, a reconstituted garnished roll. Now, I have to handle it carefully, of course. Sometimes they don't properly come together, and uh, you just end up with individual rings, uh, which are very hard to put back together, especially uh, if they are non-sequential when you get them back. Now, we can get a detailed look at this, at whether or not this cylinder has any usable sound on it. Looks good. Now, this being the 21st century, we're fortunate to have multiple options for listening to this. Uh, option number one would be to play it on uh, one of the original machines like this. Okay, you would uh, just put it right there on the spindle and you'd use a metal stylus. Using the steel stylus could actually damage uh, a garnished roll such as this. In some archives, of course, you would have no choice but to do that. However, today we can sometimes even use a laser for a contactless read of the microscopic peaks and valleys on here. So, this little bit of technology. Quite exciting. So here we have the roll. Here we have a laser. This is a sound laser. Ah, there it is. Usable audio. Now you can hear more from this uh, when it's published on danajay.com forward slash archives. Now this single is created for a display touting the benefits of the Gornish Roll at the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. Dan and Jay's Comedy Hour, who were then called Dan and Jay, those hilarious two, who at the time were my great-great-granddad, Jarek Manstuff, and my comedy partner Dan Gomiller's great-great-granddad, Darvish Palouf. Now, they made this specific recording to help the Gornish Company prove the validity of their recording equipment and, of course, uh, their new Plastinet Illumatine product. Uh, and it went over well. Unfortunately, this was also bankrolled by H.H. H. Holmes, the United States' first serial killer, uh, and so our granddad's contract with Gornish was soon cut short. Uh, this recording, though, stands as a testament to American ingenuity, as do many of the other items uh, brought home uh, from the World's Columbian Exposition, including uh, this telegraph that they uh, claim to have liberated from the uh, Morse code demonstration, and it's, it's fascinating. Uh, it, it's an interesting piece. Doesn't do much, at least not comedically. The Dana J classic comic sensibilities didn't stop there either. Uh, they did leave a note with the Telegraph, uh, which has been in the archive now for over a century, which reads, Lay in wait till comes the date that Dana J communicate. It comes in dits, it comes in daws, 
respond ye must without a pause. As tribute to our great great granddads, we have always left this telegraph wired up. Since then, the archives have existed for quite some time. Now, Darbish once wrote that he sent a test message with this very machine from the World's Columbian Exposition to a mystery man from the future who uh, told him of great advances in technology and 